Yes, good day. Um, this video um, is actually a continuation of the online class, should I say the live video we did, that is earlier today. Okay, I actually visited the video, I watched it, and I noticed some areas where the audio wasn't there. So if you've seen that video, this very part will help you understand the explanation of some of those things earlier today. Okay, now, like I made mention that a then, um, there are things you need to understand about uh, access control. Things that are needed for access control. Number one, I talked about the lock. Uh, but you might try to visit the video and check more on that. I guess you you understand better. Okay. So, I talked about the lock, the magnetic lock, the push button, the power supply, and the reader. So, this very drawing, this is a schematic on the board here. I will try as much as possible to explain again what I actually said in that video. Okay, now you need a power supply, which most times you need a backup system with it. If you have a battery backup added to your power supply, good. That's best for that. A magnetic lock is either you're using a magnetic lock or a smart. Uh, I say sorry, I say smart. Um, a strike lock. So, but. For this very uh, uh, application, I'll be using the magnetic lock. Then this is your reader. Your reader can either be a biometric uh, reader or the one with a keeper, uh, keep, a keyboard, a puncher keypad where you can enter your code or the other that uses um, cards. There are some of these reader that are also that also have a face recognition, irrespective of the kind of reader you just have to use a reader and like i said in that video i talked about your reader is the only device that is seen outside before you gain access into the area that has restricted the entrance your reader will only be outside your push button your mag lock your power supply the other other ones and the door closer will be can be in will be inside but door closer most times they're always inside so that's for that then let me explain here this power supply the positive part of the power supply is connected to the magnum part the positive of the magnetic lock okay the minute that is done the other part you need to consider is your negative part the negative part of this power supply is connected to the reader also now the part coming to this magnetic lock also feeds this reader that is from here you see this it is linked here there's a link between this all to the positive of this reader then this is the the negative all to the way to the negative of that reader but notice you note it's just only the positive that I brought here in the first place then from that video I explained that later how I drew this line you take the negative this uh, negative from this magnetic lock it goes to the normally close of your reader, the NC normally close of your reader. From your reader with your normally close, why are we using normally close? Because your magnet will always stay on, will always stay connected, as in there should be induc induction every time in that mag lock. It is only when you press your push button or you release your, your from your reader a signal is sent there like an open signal that the normally close switches from the common it switch to the open so it becomes open if there's a maybe there's a command to this reader this normally close opens and when this opens up sorry when this opens up this contact here is broken default it is closed okay but maybe you send signal here this one opens up so this uh, coil loses uh, uh, supply. So the circuit is no longer complete. The induction here is deactivated. So this one losing up, the other part of the magnet is opened up. So there's no, the lock is therefore open, release. It releases the door, then you can open the door. 
Now for the push button, like I said, there's a position, you know, from your reader, you have your positive, you have negative, you have normally close, you have normally open, you have common, you have a push button, you have alarm, just like that. They are different terminals. So, but from your push button, you can for a push button comes to the uh, position of the push button on this reader. Therefore, any time you push this button, send signal to this guy, this guy will automatically switch this contact here. It will switch this contact. It normally open releases. The normally close becomes open. And the open becomes closed. So maybe it sends this signal. It pushes button. This line that was closed, leading this, making this one active, making the the coil having a, a power. It opens this up. Maybe it opens, releases this magnetic lock. So this the door is released as at this time. And you must understand, like we discussed in that video, that your reader has uh should i say a particular timer when your door is released maybe there's a signal to that reader that it reads any or either the card is brought in a code is punctured or senses your biometric as you write it sends that signal to that uh, reader and triggers the relay controlling the magnetic uh, magnetic lock so also applies to the push button when the push button sends that signal it sends signal to the reader and the reader the normally close open that's the relay will become uh, normally close becomes open so it releases the door for you to gain access into that uh, either restricted area so um i'll be adding the other video i made earlier before this i'll add a so uh, short section to this to see how that operates but when we are dealing with uh, a strike lock that is not a magnetic lock Instead of you using your normally close, you'll be using your normally open because strike lock, they work like, um, should I say, almost something I'll call them dead boat. They are only active immediately power comes in. That is where the inducting, the inducting coil will have to drag the lock open. So it will drag it open. Immediately that count, that time, that time set in your reader elapses. Sometimes you have them in three seconds, some five seconds. Depends on the application, whatever you feel you deem fit for you to use for that uh, for that installation. But one thing you must understand: if you're doing dealing with a magnetic lock, it must always be on a normally closed contact. But if you're dealing with a strike lock, you you need the normally open contact to be connected from the reader. So that's all I think I have for now. So please, you can visit that video. We have more explanation about this lock there. How we started off drawing each of the connection from scratch but i don't want to make this video too lengthy so i had to stop at this very point so till we meet again in our next class do have a lovely day thanks for watching bye for now